Hello everyone, welcome to another video from Your Tech Today. In this video, we are going to do the camera review of the Xiaomi Redmi Note 3. So, first we will go through the hardware. So, it's a 16 megapixel on the back with f2.0 aperture and with phase detection autofocus, dual image sampling processors, and a dual tone LED flash. On the front, we have a 5 megapixel camera, it also has a f2.0 aperture. So, the hardware given for the price is pretty good and you usually don't find uh, phase detection, autofocus and dual ISPs and f2.0 aperture in this price range and definitely Xiaomi has given us uh, value for money at least hardware so let's go, to the, uh, go through the camera interface so it opens up pretty quickly and uh, this is the shutter button so it autofocuses pretty fast shutter speed is also pretty fast and this is where you can review your click images so then if you swipe to the right you have these filters so all of them are live so you can see what which uh, filter does so we select this one this is the kind of effect it will give and again so to switch off you have to go back and go back to normal so if you swipe to the left this is where different modes of the camera are this is for the uh, still camera so you have the panorama mode We'll be having a look at some of the samples in which I have included this and I would like to tell the panorama pictures that I've taken there was an issue over there with the exposure because there was a bright uh, sun on one side and I started from that side and I continued my panorama towards the other side so the exposure was a little you know, difficult for the camera to adjust to so the pictures have come out dim and the quality also in panoramas is not that good next is the timer mode you can set a timer of uh, audio and uh, suppose you say shoot so it starts takes a picture and you can obviously set it up to 10 seconds next is manual mode in manual mode there is not much of a you know choice you have the white balance daylight and all that only the white balance and the ISO can be adjusted and it goes up to 3200 and starts from 100 next is the straighten mode in this, the camera will uh, help you with all its accelerometer and other sensors to uh, make you get a perfect straight shot with the you know horizon. So that's good. So you can see, I will always have a straight shot. So even if you are, your hands are a little this thing, so the camera will crop in and try to get the straight shot. <laughs> Next mode is beautify. So this is beautiful for the rear camera so it adds some softening and all to make your skin look a little more, more smoother next is uh, handheld twilight mode this is for uh, nighttime photos you know in low light photos it's kind of gimmicky it really doesn't uh, serve much of a purpose and i have not even included the sample of it next is scene mode so in this you can select various scenes like if you're taking a portrait you can select the portrait mode, landscape, sports is, uh, and again night time which is sort of, sort of similar to the handheld twilight mode. Next is the tilt shift. So in tilt shift it will uh, kind of focus in the center and kind of blur out the uh, background of the photo. And you can adjust it by, you can increase and decrease the effect and turn it around like this. Not two fingers, just one. Next is the fisheye. It's not an actual fisheye, just a filter. I've included a sample of this also. So you can basically see what it does. So let's go to the settings and see what in our options we get. We get uh, geotagging, camera sounds, watermark if you want the time and the date on the photo, and grid lines for composition. It can scan QR codes also. And if you hold the shutter button, it will take burst focus or just focus both shoots and just focus so camera frame you can put to 16 by 9 will reduce the quality or the resolution it will not take it at 16 megapixels picture quality you can set it to high standard or low you always keep it at high face detection is uh, on so it will detect the faces and try to focus on them in a better way it will show the age and gender in the front camera volume function volume button functions you can set it to zoom volume or shutter so anti-banding is 
you know, you can under fluorescent lighting usually we see these bars coming in our photos or in our video. So you can change this setting to uh, you know nullify that effect and get a smoother video. Doesn't really work that well, but it it is there. So you can set the exposure settings. You know, if you know about this, if you are serious about photography, you will know about this. Next is contrast. You can increase or decrease. And really, don't mess with these settings. And you can restore everything to default. So this was the still camera, and this is the back uh, front camera. So here you again have the beautify. How much you want to do? And just uh, focus. There is no. You can also increase the uh, exposure or decrease it to your liking. This feature is there in the back camera also, which I forgot to show you. You increase the focus or uh, exposure or decrease it like this. Again, for the front camera, you have the filters, same as the back camera. And there are no other modes for the front camera. Now let's go to the video. You go to the video mode like this. So this can uh, the cam rear camera can shoot uh, full HD videos at 30 frames a second, and the front camera 720p, 30 frames a second. Yes, with the open camera app, you can go up to 4K and you can go full HD 60 frames a second also. But uh, Xiaomi has provided us only with uh, the default options and I have tested the camera also in the default what the phone uh, Xiaomi provides the camera software. But you can obviously go for open camera and try different modes. Even at uh, I think 75 MB per second also I was able to record 4K. That's a very high bit rate. And the quality was also better than full HD so in the video mode you have the time-lapse mode but you have slow motion also but you see it is blacked out right now because it does slow motion only in HD resolution so once you change it to HD you will get the slow motion option also so I would like to tell you that I did not shoot the slow, mo slow motion in bright light because I wanted to see that uh, how well this camera can shoot the slow motion in a dim or low lit environment so i have shot it on a you know street light and uh, shot the traffic and it's in the night or the evening time and i wanted to see and you will see the result how it is it is not very good because you need very uh, high amount of light for slow motion to work properly because it's a higher frame rate and it's not able to get in that much light in the same amount of time time lapse also is in the same location and uh, you will see the difference between the two in the sample when I show it to you. So this is where you can uh, toggle the flash on and off and that works only before you start recording the video. You cannot do anything, you can just pause the video and that's it. One more thing I would like to tell you is you can click a picture during video. Let me show it to you. Yes, you can pause and play. So we'll stop the video and we'll go into settings so in settings there is a focus mode in the video part so all the settings are over here for the video but uh, they are reduced in the still pictures but in video quality you can select up to full HD there is no frame rate uh, adjustment in open camera app you can choose your frame rates in this it is continuous, continuous auto focus or tap to focus so initially when I was testing the video feature I did not see this or I did not pay attention to this so I was on tap to focus so it was not focusing you know when I was shooting the video so you have to change the mode to continuous autofocus if you want the camera to automatically focus during video you can set the time lapse interval so I left it at this only and you can uh, switch off image capture while recording if you want to there are no filters in the video mode so this completes the interface now let's take a look at some of the samples so the videos will be uh, you will see a little later we'll start with the still so I'll be describing each uh, photo so let's take a look at this one first first you can see it's a 4 by 3 it is all in 4 by 3 all the pics have been taken in 4 by 3 format let me zoom in a bit so this is a photo of the fields it's about uh, 4 p.m. it's not uh, dimly lit so the quality was pretty good and the resolution also makes a lot of difference you can see a lot of details in the crops over here these are onions by the way <laughs> and you can see this tree also there is a lot of detail so the camera this was in HDR mode and this is without HDR I know you 
can't make a difference, you know, I can't find out the difference on the camera but I will obviously be overlaying the original pictures on top and you can uh, find out how it looks. So in HDR you see a lot better colors, you know, more uh, contrast, the shadow detail is more, even the highlights are not blown out. In this it's a little muddy, you know, even once you compare between the HDR and non-HDR you really see the difference. So this is a close-up shot. So again close-ups are uh, good in this. It really focuses well and the f2.0 aperture really helps with the bokeh effect. Again it uh, focused, focused really well and it's a well lit environment and it, the colors and nothing is blown out and it has handled the picture really well like it has got the colors and the details really nicely. So close-ups are one you know pro of this camera. Again a close-up or a macro shot. Now this is a sunset, as you can see the, the highlights are totally blown out in this area and even the shadow area is underexposed or you know it's not clear as we would say. But this was a very difficult condition and any camera would uh, you know suff uh, struggle in this uh, environment. But I still like this picture because at least the center part has a lot of details and it looks really nice the white balance has come out correctly because the sun was just setting so you can obviously edit it a little bit and make it look nice not bad now this is the panorama that i, I was talking about so this is the full panorama and uh, you can see i started on this side and there was bright sunlight so as i went this side and you can see the golden sun on the gurdwara over here building and uh, you know it has that golden color but because the exposure was so low on that side it continued with that but you can get good uh, panorama results with this phone because the stitching is nice again a daylight photo good this is also a close up again flowers colors focus on this and it was really nice the front flower There were a lot of flowers in that area where I was I was clicking. Again, really nice. I really wish the sensor was a 16 by 9 sensor, then you know it would be better. So in this picture, I'm focusing on the flower, and uh, you can see the red flowers are out of focus or the bokeh. And now I'm focusing on the red flowers, and this one is white one is out of focus. So you can see the difference. This is an HDR picture, so this is actually a river. They were, you know, constructing, I mean, uh, making the walls of the river and, you know, making it uh, cleaner and the work should be complete by July or something. So it's totally dry and all the vegetation on the side of the river. And it was again sunset time, you can see, but HDR has handled it well. So I suggest you keep HDR on unless you get very unacceptable results while you use the camera use HDR all the time. This is me going for a walk in the fields in Punjab so again really nice evening time so the greenery was just beautiful and a good uh, opportunity to test the camera also. So the resolution certainly helps because there are details man over there the, the tube well over there. So this is the fisheye mode you can see it's a little curved this is the tilt shift mode you can see the flower is in focus and this is more blurred out front facing camera picture I'm facing the sun again sun is behind me and still I am exposed pretty well picture of the sunset again similar to the previous one and it depends on how you expose it it's really it's not a very good uh, camera to get the exposure right so if you are you know shooting at a bright sunlight it will miss the exposure a bit sometimes so the previous one was not a full panorama sorry about that this is the full panorama and you can see the extent it has started from the fields and gone up till the edge over here so again the stitching is perfect but uh, again the exposure was the issue so now nighttime photos with the flash flash is a dual tone flash so 
it is uh, it gets the colors pretty accurately again we are talking about a 10000 rupees device so th we have to think about that also 10 to 12000 rupees this is a good camera for night time also again with the flash uh, close up macro shot shot with the flash and this is a night time picture and uh, no flash no nothing just a pure low light photo so you can see the light on top of the nishan side which we call it and it's bright leds over there it has got it and it's not got the glare so that's a good thing again one more with the flash so this picture shows the extent of the flash so this roof goes up to a certain distance and the flash has gone I would say about 10 to 15 feet it has exposed so this wire should be about uh, 10 feet from me so I think good enough for a small little flash on a phone so this is a front facing camera under the street light this would be the video samples which I will show you now this is uh, video quality in full HD uh, the sunset is going on over there I'm holding the camera in my hand and you can see how it ad adjusts focus and exposure so it's pretty bright light on that side so it's having little difficulty so let's just move around and see So the camera is auto focusing in video so let's see how long it takes to focus on this rose so I had to tap okay let's see now doesn't seem to be auto focusing So for me it is not auto focusing, I have to tap to focus and adjust the exposure also while recording. See now I will tap, it will focus. So after enabling uh, continuous auto focus in the video settings, it seems to be working the auto focus during video. As you can see it has focused on these flowers. I have not tapped on the screen and it's focused back into the foreground and it is pretty fast and you can see the bokeh effect also is quite nice. The background is blurry, the rose is in focus. So let's just check how much is the digital zoom and what is the quality in full HD when we zoom digitally. So it goes up to 8x and you can see the quality is pretty bad. And as there is no optical image stabilization, so you have to be very careful about any shakes. This is the front facing camera video and uh, the sun is towards that side and if I'm be sun is behind me we can see what kind of exposure we can see. The front camera records in 720p, the rear camera records in full HD but you can use an, an app called open camera and go up to 4k. In, uh, in that app in full uh, in 4k and 60 frames per second in full HD with open camera but the default app that comes with the phone can shoot only 30 frames per second full HD and through the front camera at 720p so this is the low light video quality test from the front camera I'm inside the house now and we have a single light source over there 
so as you can see it's behind me and the camera is adjusting pretty well it has lowered down the frame rate to increase the exposure and giving you an acceptable result so I think it's pretty good performance So guys I hope you got a better understanding of uh, the camera with the samples and the video samples which I showed you and uh, I know I did not cover absolutely all the features like I did not shoot a, a slow motion in the daytime because uh, there isn't much of a point because at 10,000 rupees or 12,000 rupees this camera is good the phone uh, has a capable camera and it is one of the better cameras in this price range that is what my verdict would be and I think the samples that I showed you uh, would justify that fact and yes it has its shortcoming like any other camera out there the low light uh, performance is not good uh, but you can use the flash and get acceptable results the video in low light loses frame rates and it gets a bit pixelated and choppy so the front camera is worse than the back camera for video in low light so all these issues are there but for 10,000 rupees, I think it's a very good uh, camera. And until something better comes around, this is a good buy. So if you have any questions, leave it in the comment section below. I'll try to answer it uh, as best as I can and as fast as I can. If you like the video, please hit the like button. And if you've not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. And <laughs> you will continue to uh, you know, get good content. And I will try my best to help you make decisions of buying these products. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.